Welcome to you all to this workshop, Hello Plant. I'm very happy that you are all now entering this online meeting and that you will be with us this afternoon. We will be celebrating the mysterious life of plants on the occasion of Worldwide Earth Day. It's celebrated today on many places all over the world. My name is Miriam Zegers and I'm the QA curator and coordinator of the kitchen table conversations at Artes Studium Generale in Zwolle, the Netherlands. And this workshop evolved from these kitchen table conversations, an initiative of several departments at Artes University of the Arts in Zwolle. We came together uh, around the kitchen table with some food. Now you sit at your own kitchen table, probably or close. And of course, together with your company, the plant. It may be an edible plant. It may be a carnivorous plant, an exotic plant or a geranium. In a minute, you will be invited to introduce yourself and your plant. I would like to welcome today's workshop leaders Irene Urutias and Lopke Mekes. Welcome, Irene, uh, a Mexican Canadian curator and researcher based in the Netherlands with a special focus on plant human relationships in artistic practice and recent series on post humanism. She gave an excellent talk on her work in the Master Education of Art, which led to this invitation. Welcome, Irene. Hello, Miriam, and hello, everybody. It's so nice to see um, people joining us and also plants joining us. I can see some already in the videos, and I'm super excited to get started. Great. Then we go uh, to Lopke. Lopke Mekes is a visual artist and master's student education in art at Artes in Zwolle. She drew our attention with projects in and about our natural environment that narrate stories to increase our awareness and transform our perspective on the world we live in. Welcome, Lopke. Hello, everybody. Uh, well, I'm here with my plan also and uh, looking forward to uh, joining with you this workshop today. Thank you. Lopke, a perfect team, I would say, for this workshop. Uh, and I would like to give you a warm welcome, Lopke and Irene. The floor is yours. Thanks, Miriam. Uh, hello, Irene, and welcome, everybody. Uh, awesome that you all take time to join this plant event. Uh, today, we want to uh, reconsider our relationship with plants as a way of opening up radical and creative ecological ideas. Uh, but we also like to celebrate, honor, uh, give attention to and think about plants. Okay, what means that concretely? Uh, first, we will start with some questions. And this idea comes from the podcast that we have prepared and maybe some of you have listened to. Uh, but today we also want to take it further with an audio activity and some discussions. And then uh, taking inspiration from this experience, we will take action and contribute to Earth Day. Of course, you can do this in your own way, but we will explain this later on. Uh, in the second part, after the break, uh, we will share and reflect on our actions and wrap up with a collective performance, bringing up everything we did together. Yeah, in case you are curious about the program, uh, you can find it in the chat if you want to take a look or follow along. So uh, join and uh, yeah, Irene, uh, it's up to you to start. Thank you so much, Lobke, and thanks again. Yeah, it's just awesome to see so many people here actually who are interested in plants. <laughs> um, so I am going to introduce myself first. Lobke will do that too. And what I want to do with that introduction is just kind of share some ideas, so some seeds from, well, my area, from the post-humanities and from plant studies that have really kind of sparked and inspired me. And maybe that gets us kind of started thinking about the topic. Um, because, well, why plants? <laughs> I mean, they might seem like a sort of innocent topic if you're not familiar with it, but um, yeah, they're definitely not, I think. 
Um, so ecologically, of course, you know that plants are super important. They're really abundant and necessary for life. But what I find really interesting is that our concepts about life in Western culture are hugely defined and contained by plants. So basically, you know, we think about plants as being alive in a biological sense, but not in a social or a political sense. So plants don't have political life in our societies. And it almost kind of seems like a weird coincidence that plants are, you know, alive. But actually it comes from, you know, a long history of philosophy and science. So our Western ideas about plants and life go back to Aristotle, of course. <laughs> um, so in the ancient Greeks, plants have a soul, a uh, psyche, uh, so a kind of liveliness and movement that is similar to ours, but inferior. So we have the start of this metaphysical hierarchy, right? So humans are the chosen ones because we have reason and language. Then next is animals and last is plants. And that inaugurates this tradition of just not looking at plants too closely. And it carries on, you know, through modern philosophy in Hegel, Nietzsche, Heidegger, all these big names. Um, you know, they're really interested in what makes us human. Um, you know, humans participate in history, the realization of the spirit. We have a world and it's always unlike plants or and that's what makes us different from other life like plants. Right. <laughs> so um, the idea is that kind of in this constant negation, we're probably losing something. So some ideas uh, that are going around in plant studies today are, for example, what if we take plants as a model for life instead of um, organisms like humans or animals? So um, plant philosopher Jeffrey Nealon says, for example, you know, when we think about animal life, it's a really useful for thinking about an organism or an individual because we have our digestive system kind of up inside ourselves and we can walk around, we can eat in different places, we can live in different environments, but plants are always in the ground, right? Even though we have this funny habit of putting plants in pots with little bits of earth and environment and moving them around, <laughs> that's kind of strange actually. With plants, you always need to look at the roots, which are in the soil, um, the rhizome, which is a very popular figure now. Um, you need to look at a whole forest to understand a tree, a whole field to understand grass. So how could kind of this type of life or this form of life give us a different intuition of, you know, ecology, of interconnection, of the environment? Um, I'll mention a couple of other points. Um, Ecofeminism is a big field where plant studies are going on right now. So ecofeminists have noticed how problematic it is to talk about nature and also specifically plants as passive. Um, so take flowers, for example. So for hundreds of years, both poets and biologists have been talking about flowers as these kind of beautiful, passive, almost erotic beings that are just waiting to be admired and pollinized and cultivated. And the argument is, you know, just like women or just like nature. <laughs> so plants are being used to justify things like gender roles as natural. But of course, you know, if you look at them close up, plants are not very heteronormative or patriarchal and plant life isn't necessarily beautiful or romantic, like it can be gooey, squishy, infested. And just by, you know, encountering plants, you know, in, in real life, that really falls apart very quickly, which is what uh, feminists are, are pointing out. And one last topic I'm just going to mention because it's huge right now are plant senses. So we used to say plants uh, don't feel, they don't see, they don't speak or have language like humans. And so they matter less. And on the one hand, of course, science is showing us that plants in their own way are a lot more complex and sensitive than we thought. Um, Daniel Chamovitz has some great books about um, what a plant knows is his book. But also what I want to say is that from a humanities perspective, we need to be super careful here because, you know, it's not just saying we should care about plants because the more we learn about them, understand them, the more we realize they're like us. Because in a way that just sort of reaffirms the idea that humans are actually better, right? right? or even worse, that some humans are better because people don't all have access to the same senses. 
Some people, for example, don't use language or are nonverbal, et cetera. So it gets really problematic really quickly. So yeah, just overall, what I want to start putting out there <laughs> from my point of view is that it's really important to start disturbing the way we use and instrumentalize plant life. And that's both materially and conceptually. And to kind of change this idea of nature, something is natural, meaning it should be this way. So it's normative. And that's what I'm most interested in, really rethinking um, human and non-human life through plants. And also looking at not just what life is, but how does it feel? Um, how do we care for it? And yeah, that's why I'm interested in art <laughs> to, to come uh, to the end of this very, very short intro. Because, you know, plants offer us some really theoretical problems, but art offers us a space to encounter and counter these problems, to just physically experiment, to rethink and discuss our relationship to plants. And yeah, and I think Lobke has some really nice uh, artwork examples that she can share with us. So I'll pass the word to her. Thanks, Irene. Uh, yeah, well, like you, I'm also interested in uh, rethinking life through plant life. And as an artist educator, I research about uh, how uh, and create ways in which we not only can think with our mind, but also feel and make connection with our body. Uh, I'm interested in the other, uh, and for me that's human, but also plants. And often it starts uh, from something that I don't really understand. For example, why, uh, uh, why so few old uh, trees grow in my area here in the Netherlands, while, while uh, trees can get very old. And this, and a special encounter with the 800 year old oak in Romania was for me the starting point for Einwoud, of which you can see a photo at the background here. Uh, Einwoud is a project of mine and it's a forest uh, consisting of the descendants of meaningful trees nominated by people. And these offsprings try to survive together uh, to live for more than 1000 years. Um, uh, I recently discovered a book, it's called uh, Being a Good Ancestor from uh, Roman Xeneric, maybe you know it, which really took me. He talks about cathedral thinking and um, it's about human as a small pawn in a very large structure. And he suggests us to be humble, yeah, think like and think and act at least at eight generations ahead. And I think that's interesting. And uh, uh, also when I think of my work where, um, yeah, with my work, I try to build stories in which I invite visitors to become participants. For example, by uh, nominating a tree, uh, but also by harvesting the descendants and saying goodbye to them and honoring a tree. Um, and what I try to find is a way to perceive the world with our senses, our emotions, our intuition. Because my really my drive is to uh, let you experience a cohesion between yourself and everything else. Like, um, yeah, for me, what really uh, hit me was the way astronauts describe when they. Uh, their feeling when they return to Earth after a space trip. If they are in uh, uh, outside and they see the Earth as a dot in an infinitely large universe, they get overwhelmed by a feeling of love and they want to protect the planet. And I think that's an interesting point. And uh, I read about Alexander von Humboldt. Um, he's a naturalist and an explorer. And it is a long time ago, but in uh, 1802, he had a kind of similar experience uh, when he looked down from the mountain Chimborazo in the Andes in South America, because when he looked down, he saw and he knew that everything was connected. But uh, still, uh, with our yeah, Western, more rational way of thinking, it's not always self-evident to see a tree as a companion instead of a piece of wood. And that makes me wonder how I can uh, act as an artist educator. 
and that's why I wanted to uh, show you the last project. Uh, in the background, you see a picture uh, that refers to a project I'm currently working on. It's called uh, Barhuisje. It's a one-person chapel to keep and store the remains of plants. And participants, they, uh, they look for flora. It can be a fallen leaf or a withered blossom. And they deposit it with a final greeting in a Barhuisje. And there, the flora begins a new journey to return after some time as humus, which then enriched, give birth to new life. And um, yeah, well, like Alexander von Humboldt, uh, I see uh, nature as a web of life, like one big organism in which everything is interconnected, including humans. And Especially on a day like this, I'm really honored to explore our relationship with plants and you uh, together. So, uh, yeah, let's start. <laughs>